been giving this to Hey, all right, come on down. And we should do a price is right kind of thing. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, Rich. Uh, well, I have the honor to introduce our keynote today, and I want you guys to know that uh, this gentleman is a phenomenal speaker, but he also has a phenomenal heart. He uh, rearranged his travel schedule so that he could be here with all of you today to kind of share his story, um, talk about Dream It Alive, and sort of his book, I think. He did have a nice book as well. Um, but definitely take notes and ask questions. Um, he's really entertaining, and he has kind of this interactive, engaging kind of way of uh, speaking with you guys. So here is Ash. Hi, how's everyone doing today? Y'all get some food? Feeling bigger, looking good? Nice, nice. All right, so. Uh, Really happy to be here. Uh, just, you know, like she mentioned, um, my name's Ash Kumra. I am the uh, co founder of an online platform called Dream It Alive. Its goal is to help you manifest your dreams and goals. So, the way we see ourselves in the social media world is you visit your Facebook to connect with people from your past, you know, your high school buddies, your college friends, your family, you know, significant others. Um, you visit Twitter to connect with people in the present, like, hey, I have to write throwing at Ash Cobra, hey, good to hear you talk, let's hang out, right? You go to visit Dream Alive to connect with people who want to help build out your future. So it's a platform where you help build out your dreams and goals. And I'll get into that a little later on the relevance it has. Um, but outside of that, um, I'm the author of a book called Confessions from an Entrepreneur. It is seriously one of the best books you can think of on how to become an entrepreneur because every time I read it, I get inspired. What I did is I profiled 35 other really successful entrepreneurs like, you guys heard of Wahoo's Fish Tacos? I profiled the founder of him. I profiled, you know, a um, reality show celebrity. I profiled, you know, internet entrepreneurs. I profiled investors and I asked them what does it take to succeed in your life? And you know, I know uh, Doreen can follow up with you, but there's a special where if you buy a book through Doreen, um, I'm going to give a dollar back to the organization. So, and it's, it's cheap. It's only $4. It's an ebook. It's really cheap. So, it's probably the best $4 you can spend. But enough about me. Enough about all the cool things I'm doing. Um, I want to take a step back to memory lane. And this was me in about 10 years ago. I was confused. I didn't know what I was doing. I was focused on what I would call uh, money and not passion. I was chasing things. Um, I was doing all these wrong things, right? And it's kind of interesting. So I got out of college. I won a business plan competition. I thought I was hot stuff because academic environment told me, oh my god, you're doing so well, you're going to do great. And then I got into the real world, and man, it was brutal. And it's really funny because I thought about this today on my uh, plane ride last night. Um, I, I self-caused a lot of the issues that I had in my first company. Um, I'll give you a couple examples. So one of the things I always talk about is you should never chase uh, a trend. You should always chase a passion. So I'll, here's a real simple example. How many people here are like really addictive? Facebook or Instagram users. Like, you guys just know it. Okay, great. Doreen, I, that's pretty cool you are. Cool. Um, so, let's say you were like, oh my god, I'm going to create a Facebook for the Asian American community. And someone will ask you, why would you create a Facebook for the Asian American community? Well, the Facebook for Asian American community is because Asians are predominantly a lot of level of high education. There's three, four generations involved. There's all these you know, different things that make it really valuable. So let's just do it. So let's say you do it. And what happens then is, let's say one day, business tanks. You, you we're going to get these deals from advertisers. And you know, people are like, you know, hey, we can't advertise you anymore. We just don't have the budget. So what happens? Your business falls. You do two things. One is you can cry yourself out of it, or number two is you can drop the business. Why would someone drop the business based on what I just said? 
Because they weren't building that Asian American Facebook for the right reasons. They were building it because, oh, there's a lot of money in Asian Americans and there's they have a lot of people. That's it, right? The real reason you should say is, I wanted to build an Asian American Facebook because, hey, if I'm Asian American or I have been exposed to the culture, I go on Facebook right now and there's no problems. There's not a lot of opportunities to promote the culture. So I wanted to build a life velocity brand that can go out and do that. No matter what, when you lose your business, whether there's no advertisers or there's no customers, you will find a way to make it work because you believe in it passionately. See, that's how you chase a passion, not a trend. So when I, I mentioned this slide here because I first, I first was focusing on just how to make the quick buck, the fo focus on how to make money. And every time I would do that, I'd go through this roller coaster. I'd get high in life, you know, I'd be making money, and then when one thing tanks, I go down. And then I'm like, okay, I gotta figure something out. I go up and down, up and down. I did this five times. And then finally one day I sat with my team. I'm literally like one month into this, and I'm like, okay guys, what do we do? We're not gonna, we can't quit going up and down, up and down. And so we figured, you know what? What are we really meant to do with this business? It's an online uh, video production company. So we're like, what do we really like to do? And we're like, well, we really like to promote artists. So why don't we get into the whole promoting awesome independent artists and content, right? And we went through a lot of rough times because business was slow and people were, you know, we weren't getting as many advertisers and customers, but we troughed it out. We stuck it out for like another three months. And we were like ridiculously like like we were ridiculously crazy, happy, and we're literally living off like a dollar fifty a day Robin Hood budget. It was ridiculous. It was like the happiest time of my life. We just enjoyed so much what we were doing. We we're just so passionate about what we we're doing. And then this one big, this one big hit happened. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw that movie, Slumdog Millionaire, won um, you know, the best, one of the best, uh, won some Oscar awards. Um, we got involved in helping market that film uh, before it blew up, and we got recognized as a kind of a top independent film kind of content provider. And boom, I got a lot of opportunities after that. You know, I got to speak to the White House. I got to you know, do a lot of public speaking. And all these great things happened because I stuck to my dream of my first business. And I chose to follow my passion. So you might be asking yourself, okay, great, Ash, that's fine. You, how do you, you have a passion and you, you like to talk about it and you feel? How do you develop it? Well, I'm going to tell you how you should develop it. I'm going to share with you in the next few slides some traits that you should have in how you interact with everyone in business. And then I'm going to tell you how you can apply the traditional social media tools that you're using um, to make that passion happen. Does that sound good? So the first is connecting versus networking. I learned this early on. So have you ever met those people who, I don't know, it could be at a conference, it could be a student, it could be a friend, and you could be like, hey, let's do business together. Here's my card, you need your card, let's, 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 let's see how we can help each other out, right? I do a favor for you, you do a favor for me. You know, that whole godfather approach, right? And it's cool, yeah, you're, 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 you're helping each other out, but it's very, very uh, linear because your relationship is only based on what value you provide them. That, when you have that relationship, they're only going to go out and help you out only if you help them out. And that's what I call networking. And that's not the right way to build your business. What you need to do is you need to become a connector. You have to automatically, just every person you meet, you need to figure out how can I make this person better than when I, before I met them. And you have to do this selflessly. You have to look. If you are a, uh, let's say you're a college student, and you know, let's say one of your your parents' family friends is like, hey, like I got this new uh, food concept. I really want to market to the college kids. And you're like, hey, look, like I'm in a fraternity, or hey, I'm part of an association. I'm going to tell them about it for you. And don't worry about it. I'll just do it because I want to help your business grow. And then eventually, when that guy or girl's business grows, they're going to remember you. They'll call you down the road and they'll say, hey, you know what? You, you gave me value without, without asking for anything. You want a job at my place? That's how, that's how connectors work. Because when you provide so much value for someone, they have no choice but to help you back. But they're gonna do it, they're gonna do it authentically. They're not gonna do it in a way that says, hey, you did me a favor, so I gotta do you a favor. Does that make sense, guys? You gotta really become a connector. My, everything I have ever done in my life 
and every successful person that I have talked to, and a lot more in my book, they all are connectors. They all just give, 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 and don't have the expectation that they have to automatically receive every time. This is the most important trait to be a successful entrepreneur, a business owner, a student, because you just connect, providing value for your student community, a nonprofit individual, really understand this concept. And I'm, I'd love to talk more about some examples afterwards on this, because I really want to make sure everyone here understands that. Second is to have a purpose. So remember that Facebook example? So the person who, you know, who stuck it out because they're passionate about the community, they're a part of it, they want to provide something that's not there, that's a purpose. But someone who just says, oh, you know, online video is hot right now, everyone's using Instagram, I'm going to create an Instagram copycat because you know, there's a lot of money in it, that's not a purpose, that's just a trend. And every time the trend goes down, because you don't have a purpose to it, you're going to leave it. You're going to leave it sadly, because you don't have any soul behind it. So don't, the most successful entrepreneurs, any industry, always have the purpose first, because the true purpose creates the profit. When you have a purpose, you can, you can handle a lifestyle or a long-standing business, and you will never, you will be affected when times are tough, but you will overcome it because you know, look, it's, it's part of the journey, it's part of the hustle of life. Let's create this uh, purposeful driven business and eventually it'll work out. And by the way, if your purpose doesn't make sense, meaning uh, like, you know, you're, you realize down the road, you know what, this business does not make money no matter what, it's okay to change your business. But you're not going to change it drastically because it's still going to be a, a it's going to be part of your original purpose in life. You just got to you know, figure it out and stuff like that. So that's really important. Okay, so we're going to dive into the social media aspect. I talked to you about how you know learn to be a connector, learn to have a purpose in whatever you decide to do, and social media is the best tool to unleash both of those. The first thing you got to think about when it comes to social media is you are a revolution. And I'm being serious when I say this. So this photo right here is someone I really admire, Michelle Obama. I don't know who the oh actually I don't know who the other person is, but I, Michelle Obama is on the far you know to my right, and she's an amazing person. Um, I had the fortunate opportunity to uh, go to the White House this week, and I got to hear them talk about what they feel America is about. And I'm not here to pitch you go Obama or, or whatever. That's not what the point is. My point is that like the whole time they were talking about stuff, it was about it was talk using social media as a tool. They were mentioning hashtag this, Twitter this, follow this cause on Facebook. I mean they were promoting the stuff at this event that they were speaking at. It was it was crazy. I was like, oh my God, like you could be this force with social media. Like you can have the same influence that Obama or Michelle has in your own world without, by just using social media. And how do you do that? By being a connector. If you're that guy or girl on your social media handle and you're always helping someone, whether it's commenting, whether it's like adding friends, whether it's like you know suggesting tools for someone or suggesting cool content articles, but being really helpful, you are becoming a connector. And if you're doing it with a purpose, like, I don't know, how many people here are really into, you know, rap music? I am. OK, cool. So if you're the guy or girl who's like really into rap music, and you're like always promoting like awesome new songs from certain rappers, or you're promoting like, you know, helpful, like here's some cool interviews of like a certain rapper or something like that, people are going to look at you and like, wow, this guy's, I look forward to it their posts every day, you know? And you you will be, imagine going to a job interview, right? Let's say you want to work in the music industry. Imagine someone saying, look, why should I hire you over these four or five other people that have gone to like a music program that have had five or four internships? You can say, look, I'm a force to be reckoned with online. I have this many friends. I am known for doing this many, this type of content every day. I know what's up. You have a legitimate chance of getting that internship, getting that job, because you just use social media as an influential tool, influencing tool for you. So let's get into some of how some of these tools can help you become your own revolution to get your dream job or dream business. First is, like I said, know your audience. I mentioned the hip hop thing, right? So if you're gonna be this 
person who's going to promote awesome hip hop news and stuff, make sure you're promoting the right person. Notice I said who here likes hip hop music. Some people raise their hand. That's who you should market to. Don't market to the people who don't know her. Don't, don't like hip hop music or care about it, right? Here's a great example, too. Uh, how many of you guys here watch Shark Tank and ABC? Cool. So here's the biggest problem I see on Shark Tank. Not the show, but here's a problem I see that entrepreneurs go through, some of them go through. And um, sometimes you'll see this guy or girl, and they're like star crazy because, you know, like Mark Cuban is, is a celebrity, right? And some, some of them have this intent of trying to close Mark Cuban down. Mark Cuban will sometimes, and you know, some people don't like it. I think it's great, it's just being honest. He'll just say in the beginning, I'm out, right? He'll just say off the top, like even right after the pitch ends. He doesn't even want to bother learning about your business. He just doesn't have an intuitive feel. So what I would say, what's funny is that sometimes people will still try to pitch to Mark Cuban. They will literally go, but Mark, you don't understand. Mark's like, I'm out. He's like, but you don't understand. 